Welcome, generals. My name is Dr. Ivan, and this is a new Let's Play of Hearts of Iron 4. And it's not just a Let's Play, it is a Let's Play of the new c content released by Paradox next week, Death or Dishonor. And if you're not sure if this is Death or Dishonor, well, this is a, the new background, and we are on the 1.4 Oak patch as well. So, Paradox has been kind enough to allow me to uh, preview this for you, this patch, um, this DLC, and that adds a lot of, well, it adds four focus trees to a few of the lesser axes, sort of, nations in Europe, but it also uh, has a lot of other changes to the game, uh, AI upgrades, air force rework completely but as you might see from the title of the video as well we're going to be playing as austria hungary but um new game yeah that's uh i did a test game to test a th few things out but austria hungary does not exist at the start of the game You, Hungary is one of the four nations that gets a new focus tree, together with Czechoslovakia, Kingdom of Romania, and Yugoslavia. But we're going to be playing as Hungary and forming the Austria-Hungary, Austria well, the, the Kingdom of Austria-Hungary, the dual monarchy, and hopefully in time conquer Europe with it, maybe? Definitely go after the Germans, possibly. If we can even do that, I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, it is time to try out Hungary. So one half of the late Austro-Hungarian Empire, Hungary was treated as a defeated enemy by the victorious Entente after the Great War. In the Treaty of Trianon, the country lost almost two-thirds of its territory. Millions of ethnic Hungarians found themselves living outside its borders and its economy was left in ruins. Harsh restrictions on rearmament were supposed to ensure that Hungary could never again threaten the peace in Europe. But with the political climate in Europe shifting, the time may have come to finally right the wrongs of the past and regain the former glory of the nation. Elect a king, renounce the Treaty of Trianon. Well, we're going to select Hungary, and here we are, this little orange-pink. Uh, salmon. I would say it's salmon colored. Country in the middle of Europe. I'm going to play in regular difficulty. Uh, I'm going to leave historical AI focuses on. So that makes the game, uh, well, regular. I'm going to also put on Iron Man mode. So we get no cheats or modified game save. Okay, I cannot get achievements. Anyway, it's... Oh, <laughs> it's probably because I'm on a preview build that I cannot get achievements. Anyway, then we're going to do it without this. Without Iron Man, which is better for the recording anyway. Um, first things first, we have a army that has 16 divisions. The 14 of them are Gyalog Dandar. And then we have two Hussar Dandar. Uh, oh. Now there are a few. There's already a small thing different. Um, oh, that doesn't work like this because we're not. Okay, if we, sub if we put them in an army and we double click on a unit type, it will select all the templates of that type. So I'm gonna put the Hussars in a different army. Basically, this will be my cavalry army. It will eventually get some armor. Because I want to make a very fun, well, a diverse army, so to speak. Uh, you're going to get General Ivan Hindi. And for now, I'm going to put your front line on the Austrian border. And you're just going to have a fallback line on Budapest. Um, Technology-wise, it's quite simple. It's going to be some of the normal things. 
I'm gonna go with um, Mobile Warfare in this case. Oh, that's actually a lot of soft attack bonus there. Max entrenchment, entrenchment speeds, reinforcement rate, minimum training level. No, yeah. Um, planning speed goes up, division speed goes up, or gloss when moving goes down. But yeah, I want to go into tanks eventually. Um, I mean, we might look small right now, but remember, we are going to reform the Austro Hungarian Empire. Wow. Retribution. This must be one of the new songs. I wish you could see... Ah, yeah, it would be nice to know if uh, a music came from... Uh, from which expansion the music came, to be honest. Anyway, the other researches, one of them is going to be electronic mechanical engineering, and then finally basic machine tools. Because we need the machine tools anyway to get down to uh, the next levels of industry research anyway. Pre civilian factories, um, they changed some things with how infrastructure and. Um, well, actually, let's look at this first, because this is actually very impactful for what we are going to build. So the Treaty of Trianon forces us to have 50, well, 0.5% less recruitable population, as well as our military factory construction speed is halved, which is terrible. So this will, this on top of the fact we only have five available factories is just going to mean I'm going to build infrastructure in our capital area so that later on when we start building we actually I can show you this um, building one civilian factory would be done with five factories in just over 11 months if we were to build one military factory in the same province it would take almost 20 full months. Even though normally it is a lot cheaper and faster to build a uh, military factory. But yeah, I'm going to build the infrastructure first because infrastructure gives a boost to construction speed nowadays. Which is actually quite useful. We have three out of six military factories. I'm going to put... Um, Four on infantry equipment. It's always useful to have that. I'm going to get started on one line of artillery. Even though that's useless without steel anyway. And I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to put it on the support equipment. Because we have a massive ton of aluminum. But what I am going to do. Just to make sure. Is start trading for some steel. And I'm going to get it from Sweden. And it has quite a useful reason why Sweden. Because France, Germany, and the Soviet Union, which are all up here. Oh, no trade route can be found to the United Kingdom. But can be found to the Gyeongsi click. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We cannot trade with the UK, probably because we need convoys. But since we have a land connection through the Soviets to the Gyeongsi click, we can trade steel with the Gyeongsi click. Yeah, anyway, the, the three, the five major nations that we could trade from potentially that have a lot of steel might eventually oppose us in some, one way or another. So we're not going to do that at all. So um, we've done all the basic things and now we can delve into the actual focus tree. Um, I will look at planes and what they can do a, another time. Because it's not important for us right now. Um, yes, the focus tree. Welcome to the Kingdom of Hungary focus tree. It's quite wide. Over here on the right side you have some a little bit of army things. That leads to the Bled Agreement. And the Bled Agreement will allow us to hopefully remove the... Um, its event, Hungary demands right to rearm.
Oh. As France may not have completed the Little Entente for this to be allowed to do. Right, something else. Anyway, the Bled Agreement um, asks, Hungary asks Romania, hey, would you care if the Treaty of Trianon goes away? And it's nice for, the, for us. I mean, here's a lot more uh, army stuff. Uh, like joint tank development gets you into tank research within your faction. Uh, over here we have naval stuff. And as you might see, we have quite a lot of coastline around us. Yeah, there is actually... Um, any state controlled by the Kingdom of Hungary must be coastal for you to even start the naval warfare one. So, at least that's a thing. Here in the middle we have industrial revitalization. This is basically the industry track. And there's actually a nice uh, combination over here between the Air Force, that's by the way also here of course, and the in, um, industry trees, uh, the branches. Because if you go with establish the Air Force, you get three choices. Either you license foreign productions, which means you get a much cheaper to buy the production licenses from other nations. And that is also new with this expansion. You can basically say, hey Germany, I would like to, um, you know, build those uh, Stuka dive bombers that you have as close support. Uh, would you be interested in that? Then you pay them some, I'm not sure what you pay. Actually, we might be able to check that right now. Uh, requested. Expected cost. Well, they will not accept. So basically, I think it's... Oh, you trade civilian factories. That is actually... Yeah. So you trade civilian factories to allow you to do licensing of specific things. And in this case particular case you're allowed to get much cheaper plane licenses hmm. fighter competition interesting or bomber competition in order for us to be able to select the best model of bomber airplane to produce under license, we must pit the contenders against each other. We will organize a bomber competition and invite all major powers to send their most modern bomber models to participate. Oh, that's interesting. So you get like, hey, who has the best one? I know there's also joint air development that allows you to join up with your faction to create better aircraft. But then there's the indigenous designs that you can only get if you went through the domestic arms industry tree over here. It's the only way to get that. And it just gets you minus 10% research time on air stuff, which is sizable. Then you get light air effort for some light craft or heavy fighters. So either light fighters or heavy fighters. And you get close air support or tactical bomber focus, which gives you some bonuses to those types of models. Domestic arms industry also gives you research slots and a total of five military factories. Which uh, are quite beneficial to have considering the fact that you cannot build them in the first few years that you play. Be Excuse me, because of the Bled Agreement. Um, the Treaty of Trianon that you can remove with the Bled Agreement over here. On the other hand, you also have civilian industry, which allows you to get construction speed on infrastructure and civilian factories. Gets you a total of four civilian factories. And also gets you 12 steel, 16 aluminum, and also that research slot. It's just a little bit later on. I mean, this one is done. You can get, you can get the research slot. If you take civilian, you need to get three more before you get the research slot. Then again, there's also a research slot up here. So Hungary can get up to five research slots. Now for the most interesting part. Of the tree for Hungary, obviously. The um, so-called political part of it. So you can either go economic interventionist or balanced budget. Now with economic intervention, which is what we're not going to pick, we must direct ample political resources direct our economy. Though it is adequate, we can make it stronger and more efficient yet. 
So you get, um, you lose a lot of power for it afterwards, but you get more civilian factories to use. And after that, you can either go communism or you can go fascism, basically. Um, political power gain, you get it back somewhat with, uh, no, you get it back completely. And this one get you another one, fascists. Renew Rome protocols, trade deal with. Ah, yes, yeah. so if you go through economic intervention, you can get the political power back here. Otherwise, you will get it back here too. So you'll get it back, but yeah, of course, there's the uh, Kingdom of Hungary, they renounce this Treaty of Trianon. Could be uh, problematic. And then you get some claims on areas around us, basically. Um, so, like Transylvania, Slovakia. Then you can demand it. And as well as Transylvania, Vojvodina. That's from Yugoslavia. Then you get Greater Hungary. That's. Um, if you look at the territories, that is this area. And these three, as well as obviously this one. And that's about it. So it's, it's, you become bigger, but that's about it. Of course, here we have the communist part of it. Um, you get a lot of people. Of course, they do that again. Every freaking tree that goes like, hey, you want to go communist? Here, have five percent of your population as army available. Like what? Uh, you can join the Comintern, and then you get to intervene in Czechoslovakia or pressure Romania. Here we get uh, again the research thing. Yeah. You need make massive support. Anyway, that's for going communist and going fascist. But unlike others, Romania, uh, Hungary, I should say, has a completely special one. Um, that is the fact that you can become Austria-Hungary, which is what we're going to do. And you're considered unaligned. You're not going to be fascist or communist or democratic for that matter. You're just going to be a monarchist, which is... Kind of unique compared to the other, most other things you can choose in the world when it comes to trees. Anyway, um, so you balance your budget, then you strengthen the monarchist and you elect the king. Popular support for the nation to return to a monarchy government form is now sufficient that we can begin to think about initiating the process of electing a new king. Now you need more than 30% support for the F48P, which is a... Uh, you get Lensigi at 48 as It's basically the monarchist party, I guess. But you already start with 44%, and they are actually in charge of the government at the moment as well. So, but the Horthy government is also fascist, so it's and it's an interesting fellow, this uh, Miklos Horthy. Huh. But yeah, and then when, after you elect a king, you can choose to either go fascist king, which allows you to go further into the fascist tree again. Hmm, could be done. That gets you Friedrich Franz of Mecklenburg Schweren. Okay. You could elect a democratic king, which is Karl V Wilhelm, which is apparently family of the Swedish king. We seek a king will uphold the democratic principle of our nation and the rights of our people. Or he can invite the Habsburg prince back and basically restore the empire. They can either take Austria by force or by referendum. Then you restore the empire and then you can get some more claims and stuff to do. Um, there are some events triggered by that which is going to be fun. Anyway, we are going to balance the budget and uh, yeah. That is basically it for this episode. We have done... You know what? We've moved the clock one hour. I want to thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date in the future. Expect um, a little bit of Hungary 
and later on Austria, Hungary throughout the coming weeks. Maybe even less. I'm not sure. Uh, a game of Hearts of Iron 4 doesn't take very long, depending on the speed at which you play. And since the early game is not the most interesting part of the game, you usually get to the warfare part of it quite quickly. Anyway, I will see you guys later.